So West Asia is mourning Nasrallah's death. But here's a surprise. So are some people in India. We've seen rallies and protests in Kashmir and Lucknow. Not the small, spontaneous kind. These were big, well-organized processions. Hundreds of protesters slash mourners joined in. They carried posters with Nasrallah's face. Take a look at this. <laughs> To give you some background, Hezbollah is a Shia militant group and Shias are a minority in Kashmir. They make up just 10% of the population, but they do have certain strongholds. For example, Badgam. It's located around 14 kilometers from Srinagar. And there such sentiments have always existed, even before the Gaza war. In the Shia quarters, you could see posters of Iran's Ayatollah or Qasim Soleimani or Hassan Nasrallah. There was a sense of Shia solidarity beyond borders. So this outpouring of grief is not surprising. But here's the problem. Supporting Gaza is fine. So is supporting the people of Lebanon. But supporting Hezbollah, that's more complicated. Legally, you can, you can do it. No one can stop you. Hezbollah is not banned or a designated terror group in India. The government of India does not categorize the Hezbollah as terrorists. So you can support them if you want to, but I'm afraid this issue is not just legal. It's also a question of morals and national interest. Hassan Nasrallah had blood on his hands, the blood of innocent civilians. Just consider what happened in July this year. Hezbollah rockets hit a football field in the Golan Heights. They killed 12 innocent children. And it happened on Nasrallah's watch. Should anyone be celebrating such a man? You can question Israel's tactics, you can call out the violations of international law, but it doesn't change a simple fact. Hassan Nasrallah was an evil man. He may have fought for the Shia community, but he slaughtered innocents. And that's the moral problem with celebrating him. Now we come to national interest, because it's not just common people mourning him. Some Indian politicians are doing the same, like Mehbooba Mufti. She leads the People's Democratic Party in Kashmir, the PDP. Plus, she's a former chief minister. And Mufti cancelled her election campaign on Sunday. Do you know why? As a mark of respect for Nasrallah. Now, this was a strange decision to make because Kashmir will be voting tomorrow. It's the last phase of the assembly elections there. And yesterday was the last day of campaigning. Yet Mufti said, I will not hit the campaign trail. That too for Hassan Nasrallah, the same Nasrallah who supported Kashmiri self-determination, who undermined India's sovereignty over Kashmir. Should an Indian politician be celebrating such a man, that too a former chief minister? Surely not. And it's not just Mehbooba Mufti. A lot of candidates cancelled their campaign on Sunday. Like Ruhullah Mehdi a senior national conference leader. The BJP has criticized these moves. They say the opposition is mourning a terrorist. Hassan Nasrullah ka maud ho gaya aur aas Kashmir mein Mehbooba Mufti bol raha hai ki hum sunav prasar nahi karunga. Hum dukhi hai kis liye Hassan Nasrullah ka maud ho gaya hai. Main Mehbooba Mufti, Farooq Abdullah, Rahul Gandhi sab ko pusna saata ho. जब हमारे कभी कोई जगह में हिंदू का मर्द होते हैं आतंकवादी हिंदू जवानों को मारते हैं तब आप लोग दुखी होते हैं कि नहीं होते हैं ये कृपा करके हमें बताइए Some in Kashmir have been more careful, like former Chief Minister Omar Abdullah. He did not openly mourn or celebrate Nasrallah, but he asked the central government to put pressure on Israel to work towards ending the war. It's important to see all this in a broader context because there is a campaign to globalize the Kashmir issue. Pakistan has been doing it. Turkey has been doing it. Recently, even if Iran's supreme leader did it, he clubbed Kashmir with Gaza and Myanmar. In that context, certain red lines must be drawn. First, you cannot back leaders slash terrorists who undermine India's sovereignty. That's what Hezbollah has done in the past. They question India's rights over Kashmir. And two, you cannot equate Kashmir with Gaza. That comparison is simply not on. But some Kashmiri leaders have hinted at it, like Mehmooba Mufti's daughter, Iltaja Mufti. 
She's making her debut in this election and she talked about atrocities on Muslims in Gaza and Kashmir as if they're comparable. Another example is senior national conference leader Farooq Abdullah. He said Kashmir could turn into Gaza without India-Pakistan talks. Again, unacceptable. Such statements are coming from senior political leaders. They will influence the next generation. In fact, we're already seeing that. A lot of children were part of these rallies in Kashmir. Look at how they talked about Nasr Allah's death. Do you think she understands West Asian politics or the nature of Hezbollah or what Hassan Nasrallah stood for? Chances are no, which is why Kashmir's politicians need to set better examples. There is a difference between Muslim solidarity and terror solidarity. I'm afraid this is leaning towards the latter. First Post decodes the U.S. election. Explains how America chooses its president. Your primer on the race to the White House. Everything you need to know about how America votes. And its global implications. U.S. election explained. Every Monday and Thursday only on First Post.